Hey guys, today for our economy lesson five, we are going to talk about goods and services. Before we start, we're going to add, I'm going to ask a couple review questions. I want you to try to come up with the answer before I share it. I'll give you just a minute or two for each question. All right, what is currency? And these are questions that you'll see um, are similar to the questions you'll see on your test um, at the end of next week. Currency is a system of money. And the reason that these North, East, South, West are on here, this is actually supposed to go with a game that we would play in the classroom. Um, but since we're not in the classroom, we're just not going to pay attention to these. Um, but currency is a system of money. What is income? Income is money that is earned, which is an example of saving. And your options are buying groceries, paying the water bill, putting money in the bank, or medical expenses. Well, buying groceries, paying the water bill, and medical expenses are all needs. Putting money in the bank is an example of saving which is an example of spending, getting paid for doing a job, back to school shopping, a budget, or things needed to run a barber shop. Back to school shopping would be an example of spending. That is an example of spending money. Getting paid for doing a job is an income, and then a budget is a budget, um, and things needed to run a barbershop is a need, but it's not spending. What is a budget? A plan for your income, saving for college, paying bills, or buying new shoes. A budget is a plan for your income. Saving college, paying bills, and buying new shoes might all fit in your budget, but a budget is a plan for your income. What is economics? The study of places on earth, history, being a good citizen, or the study of wants and needs, scarcity in supply and demand? It is the study of wants and needs, scarcity in supplies and demand. Which is an example of a want? An ice cream sundae, groceries, paying the power bill, or house payment? Well, sometimes we might think we need some ice cream, but an ice cream sundae would be a want. Groceries, paying the power bill, and house payment are all needs. Which is not an example of a need we have in our classroom? Games, pencils, books to read, food for lunch. Games would be an example of something that is not a need. Games would be a one. Pencils, books to read, and food for lunch are all things that we need in the classroom. All right, so now we're going to take a look at goods and services. Um, our economy is not only dependent upon wants and needs, but it is also dependent upon goods and services. So we're going to learn what goods and services are. Goods are objects and things people buy. What different goods do you buy when you go to the store? So think about a trip to the store. I know a lot of times when my kids go in the store, they want candy and cereal and chocolate milk. Um, when I go to the store, I have to get things like bread and chicken to cook for dinner, vegetables, fruits. Services are tasks you can pay people to do. How many services can you think of? Well, look at the picture. There's one example, some, a barber getting, um, cutting someone's hair. So you pay someone to cut your hair. Sometimes we pay people to wash our cars. Um, we pay people to fix our cars. Um, we pay 
people to, um, sometimes we can pay people to clean our house. Um, and now even some t- in bigger cities, you can pay people to deliver your food to you from restaurants. So, and, and from grocery stores. So there's all kinds of services that we can pay for. All right, so consumer is a person who buys goods and services. So if you are paying somebody for a good or a product, groceries, um, or a service, um, like paying to have your car fixed, um, you are a consumer. Important. Goods and services are both important parts of our economy. Goods and services get people to spend money and provide a source of income for people. Consumers have to budget for goods and services that they want and need. So some services we need, like we said, sometimes we we have to get a haircut. Sometimes we have to pay to have our car fixed. Sometimes we have to pay a plumber to come to our house. But then things like I was talking about the services of having your groceries or your um, food delivered or having someone clean your house or clean your car, those are all wants. What is bartering? Sometimes consumers will barter or trade for the goods and services they need. Bartering is when people exchange goods or services without the use of money. So this is actually something um, that you talk about later on when Native Americans, whenever um, the colonists from um, Europe and Spain all came to um, America and where and the Native Americans were in America, they bartered with one another. There was not a um, currency. There was not a money that between the two of them that they could use. So they bartered by trading things. They would trade um, the food, um, the crops that they grew. They would trade um, animal furs um, and they traded services. Sometimes they would do things for one another. So that is something that you will learn later on um, when you learn more about um, the colonists coming to America. Um, bartering is, is service that was used a long time ago, um, but we still barter today. So if you tell somebody you will go cut their grass, if they give you a bike that they have in their backyard, you're bartering, you're exchanging a service for a good because there's no money being exchanged. Okay, now I want you to listen to this story called A New Coat for Anna. Your assignment today is going to be to answer some questions. So make sure you listen closely because you're going to have some questions to answer about this story. Writing's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct. A New Coat for Anna by Harriet Zephart, illustrated by Anita Lobel. Winter had come and Anna needed a new coat. The fuzzy blue coat that she had worn for so many winters was no longer fuzzy and it was very small. Last winter, Anna's mother had said, When the war is over, we will be able to buy things again, and I will get you a nice new coat. But when the war ended, the stores remained empty. There still were no coats. There was hardly any food, and no one had money. Anna's mother wondered how she could get Anna a new coat. Then she had an idea. Anna, I have no money, she said, but I still have grandfather's gold watch and some other nice things. Maybe we can use them to get what we need for a new coat. First, we need wool. Tomorrow, we will visit a farmer 
and see about getting some. The next day, Anna and her mother walked to a nearby farm. Anna needs a new coat, Anna's mother told the farmer. I have no money, but I will give you this fine gold watch if you will give me enough wool from your sheep to make a coat. The farmer said, what a good idea, but you will have to wait until spring when I shear my sheep's winter wool. Then I can trade you their wool for your gold watch. Anna waited for spring to come. Almost every Sunday, she and her mother visited the sheep. She would always ask them, is your wool growing? And the sheep would always answer, bah. Then she would feed them nice fresh hay and give them hugs. At Christmas time, Anna brought them paper necklaces and apples and sang carols. When spring came, the farmer sheared the sheep's wool. Does it hurt them? asked Anna. No, Anna, said the farmer. It is just like getting a haircut. When he had enough wool to make a coat, the farmer showed Anna how to card the wool. It's like untangling the knots in your hair, he told Anna. Then he gave Anna's mother a big bag of wool and Anna's mother gave him the gold watch. Anna and her mother took the bag of wool to an old woman who had a spinning wheel. Anna needs a new coat, Anna's mother told the woman. I have no money, but I will give you this beautiful lamp if you will spin this wool into yarn. The woman said, a lamp? That's just what I need. But I cannot spin quickly, for I am old and my fingers are stiff. Come back when the cherries are ripe and I will have your yarn. When summer came, Anna and her mother returned. Anna's mother gave the old woman the lamp and the old woman gave them the yarn and a basket of delicious red cherries. Anna, what color coat would you like? Anna's mother asked. A red one, Anna answered. Then we will pick some lingonberries, said Anna's mother. They make a beautiful red dye. At the end of summer, Anna's mother knew just the place in the woods to find the ripest lingonberries. Anna and her mother boiled water in a big pot and put the berries into it. The water turned a deep red. Anna's mother dipped the pale yarn into it. Soon, red yarn was hanging up to dry on clotheslines strung across the kitchen. When it dried, Anna and her mother wound the yarn into balls. They took the yarn to the weaver. Anna needs a new coat, Anna's mother said. I have no money, but I will give you this garnet necklace if you will weave this yarn into cloth. The weaver said, what a pretty necklace. I will be happy to weave your yarn. Come back in two weeks. When Anna and her mother returned, the weaver gave them a bolt of beautiful red cloth. Anna's mother gave the weaver the sparkling garnet necklace. The next day, Anna and her mother set off to see the tailor. Winter is coming and Anna needs a new coat, Anna's mother told the tailor. I have no money, but I will give you this porcelain teapot if you will make a coat from this cloth. The tailor said, that's a pretty teapot. Anna, I'd be very happy to make you a new coat, but first I must take your measurements. He measured her shoulders. He measured her arms. He measured from the back of her neck to the back of her knees. Then he said, come back next week and I will have your coat. The tailor set to work making a pattern, cutting the cloth, 
pinning and sewing and stitching and snipping. He worked and worked for almost a whole week. When he finished, he found six pretty matching buttons in his button box and sewed them on the coat. He hung the coat proudly in the window for everyone to see. When Anna and her mother returned to the tailor's shop, Anna tried on her new coat. She twirled around in front of the mirror. The coat was perfect. Anna thanked the tailor. Anna's mother thanked him too and gave him the pretty porcelain teapot. Anna wore her new coat home. She stopped at every store to look at her reflection in the window. When they got home, her mother said, Christmas will soon be here. And I think this year we could have a little celebration. Anna said, oh yes. And please, could we invite all the people who helped to make my coat? Yes, said Anna's mother. And I will make a Christmas cake just like I used to. Anna gave her mother a big hug. On Christmas Eve, the farmer, the spinner, the weaver, and the tailor came to Anna's house. They all thought Anna looked beautiful in her new coat. The Christmas cake that Anna's mother baked was delicious. Everyone agreed that this was the best Christmas they had had in a long time. On Christmas Day, Anna visited the sheep. Thank you for the wool, sheep, she said. Do you like my pretty new coat? The sheep seemed to smile as they answered. Bah! Bah! Okay, so now you are going to answer a few questions on Schoology about Anna and her new coat. So I want you to think about how Anna and her mom got the coat, how they, how they were able to pay for the coat. Did they use money to pay for the coat? So um, answer the questions on Schoology. And if you need to go back and look at the read aloud again, you can. And that will be your assignment for today. Have a good weekend.